Head coach Kelly Graves and student athletes Sabrina Ionescu and Satu Sabali. And SID over here, um, Jimmy Stanton. Uh, coach, if you would begin with an opening statement, please. Would love to. Are these on? Okay, great. Well, we're honored to be here and, um, you know, really excited to have both Sabrina and Satu uh, with me as well. Uh, for some of you, you, maybe you didn't know, but Ruthie Hebert is uh, on her way to Dubai with uh, Team USA in, uh, in a three-on-three -three tournament. Um, but uh, anyway, you guys were, uh, you know, I think a lot's been said about this team. All I know is that we are excited. We're play we've been playing hard and practicing hard. And, uh, you know, we're, I, I think, ready for whatever uh, this season's going to throw at us. So <coughs> questions? Hi, Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Um, for Kelly and for the players, how long do you feel like it took you to get over the final four loss? You guys want to go? Um, I mean, I don't think I'll ever get over it, um, if you want me to be honest. Obviously, now, you know, our attention's elsewhere. We're not really um, focusing too much on, on the past, and we're focusing on the future. But, I mean, I don't think, we're, you know, we're ever going to gonna get uh, over that loss. But definitely learning a lot from, from that game and, and what we need to do and what we need to improve on. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it, that loss is driving us now to do better this year and just get, taking that experience from that loss and those those emotions, like using that more as a motivator rather than being like, oh, we played so bad, oh, we lost this game, more than, hey, we're going to win this next game. And Michelle, uh, honestly, I think I'm a little bit different than, than uh, you know, our student athletes in that as a coach, you, you're always – Trying, you know, it hurts in the moment, but we're always turning our page, you know, turning the page to what's next. And and certainly it was this season, and and there's always the recruiting component and everything else that we're doing. But uh, you know, we we had such a great season, and and really had a chance in that semifinal game, and we just uh, you know missed some shots that were a little out of character for us, but we were pretty close. And I think it's made everybody hungry, and it certainly has me as a coach it inspired me to to work harder in the off season. Okay, so what did you work harder on in the off season, and what did you need? In your estimation, you said that that game exposed some things we needed to work on. Uh, Sabrina, what what are some of those things that you needed to work on, and how did you work harder, and what did you do harder in the off season, young man? I'm walking more steps every day, <laughs> keep my head clear so I can coach better. Uh, I think secondly. Uh, you know, I've kind of dissected it and looked at, at, at why, you know, we, we made the mistakes that we did. And, and I think just the fact that we're going to be deeper this year is, is going to help. Um, you know, I, I thought that that just really hurt us last year. Even, you know, let's say an injury like Taylor Chavez. You know, even if she gives us Sabrina and Maite two minutes rest in each half, you know, maybe we don't finish one for 13. We've got a few more legs because the shots we, we got were really good. Uh, I think secondly, if I, I've really turned my attention to the defensive end of the of the court. And, um, you know, we're, we're so efficient offensively, by far the, the most efficient offense in the country and the best shooting team in the country. But we're only adequate defensively. So we need to, to make some, uh, you know, better inroads. And I, I know gaining someone like Mignon Moore really helps in that regard. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say uh, defensively. I think we've learned a lot from that game. And, uh, I mean, us guards have to do better of, um, you know, just keeping our players in front of us and our posts have to just get more aggressive on the blocks. And so I think on the defensive end, that's where we're going to be taking huge steps this year. And then offensively, I mean, it, you know, it wasn't easy with, with not a lot of depth last year. But, uh, I mean, we have to push through that. And so just this offseason, uh, getting my shot better. And, and all of us have been shooting the ball really well. And, and working on different ways to score around the basket and on the perimeter. And I'll go one step further here. You know, we, like I said, we had the best true shooting percentage in the nation, points per possession, best turnover rate, on and on and on. But our 
I think our offense is even going to be more dynamic. I think we're trying to stay ahead of, of you know, everybody else in that regard. So we want to play even faster and share the ball even more. Anne Marie Anderson, Pac-12 Network over here. Uh, Kelly, as you look ahead at the schedule, what do you see as some of the more challenging parts? As I'm looking at your schedule between <coughs> January 25th and February 24th, you have eight games on the road and two at home. So, you know, how do you prepare yourself, and that's for the athletes as well, for a stretch like that? Yeah, well, good question. And that really concerns me, and I, I don't know what the answer is, but uh, there's only four teams in the, in the conference this year that play four games in a row on the road during conference play. Uh, and, and we do it, and those teams do it once. We have to do it twice. So we have two four game conference road trips. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, you know, going to be difficult to manage, I think, uh, especially, you know, the, the back to back trips to the California schools in February, late in the season. Uh, but, you know, we're not going to make excuses. I mean, that's the schedule we got. It's not ideal, but we're going to make the most of it. And, uh, and I think if any team can handle it, it's, it's this group. You know, we have uh, experienced veterans who've been around the block and won at a high level, and uh, I think that's been one of our, our strengths as a program. You know, we don't make excuses. We'll, we'll do whatever we have to do. So, but, yeah, that's not ideal. And quite frankly, our non-league schedule, and we were as aggressive as any team in the country, having to go to UConn, to Syracuse. We play Louisville and Oklahoma State on neutral sites, and then we host Kansas State and then South Dakota State, the team we beat in the Sweet 16 this year at home. So... You know, it, it's aggressive, and then you get in Pac-12 play. It's the best, best this league has ever been since I've been coaching in the Northwest. Uh, I don't think it's ever been deeper or ever been better at the top. Uh, Nick D'Ashley from the Oregonian for Sabrina and Kelly. Um, <coughs> the the play for pay law from California has been in the news here the last few, few weeks. How do you feel like a law, if that ever comes to fruition, would affect players like you? I mean, I, I haven't thought too much about it just because I'm just so busy with basketball. But, um, I mean, I hope whatever they do decide to do, I hope everything's, you know, in the best interest of the student athletes and um, in that regard. Uh, I know it's just been passed in California and a couple other states, but um, hopefully they continue to, to figure what, what's going to be best for the student athletes. Uh, I thought she said it perfectly. I, you know, same here. I think whatever we can do to, to help the student athlete experience, I, I think is, um, you know, is important. However, I am one who believes that there is value in, in in a scholarship. I mean, that is real money. And when you know, I remember doing the math one time somewhere, I can't remember what it was. If you if if you divide the amount of the scholarship, and that doesn't include all the perks that you get as a student athlete, and you divide that into the total number of hours we're allowed to work our student athletes out, they're still making well over $100 an hour to be basketball players. So that's, you know, that's real money and that's the best part-time job they're ever going to have. Uh, but at the same time, I, 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 I do see it on the horizon and, and I, I, would support, uh, I would support that. I, I, I truly do believe that you know, they work really hard and, and, uh, and there's value in, you know, in, in sharing some of that for them. Uh, Sabrina, you've already accomplished so much, um, and maybe it's different from when you were a freshman coming in. What's driving you personally this season? Um, I mean, just it being my last And to help this team, I mean, they've given so much to me, and um, that's ultimately why I came back for my senior year is because of the people that are around me and that sacrificed so much for me. And so coming back, just uh, super excited to get back with the team and continue to be the best, the best role model, the best basketball player, the best person that I can is ultimately what drives me. Uh, Sabrina, Ben Parker from GoldenBearReport.com. You already kind of touched on what I was about to ask you, but just can you talk a little bit more about what went into your decision process? You could have gone to the WNBA, been a high top three, top four pick, maybe number one pick. Just talk a little bit more about that decision process and coming back for your senior year. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it wasn't easy just because I, I had a few hours after our game to, to decide what I was going to do. Um, and so I just, you know, sat down and kind of wrote down the pros and cons to, to both decisions and tried to make the best decision for myself. And, um, I mean, I did make the best decision. I'm really happy that I stayed and, and didn't really jump into going pro so soon. Um, and so obviously wanting to play along Satu and some of the great players that we have, um, you know, returning and obviously some of the new players that we have coming in and just, you know, spending my last year with our coaching staff and, and those people that believed in me when, when I was in high school is, is what I wanted. 
This way. Um, for both players, what is the difference between being, you know, early in your career as kind of an up and coming team and then being a favorite, being somebody that people talk about for a title or whatever? How does it change your mentality? How does it change your preparation? Does it change anything? Uh, for me personally, it doesn't change anything at all. Um, I mean, every day that I step, you know, foot on the practice on the practice court in the gym, I try and be the best basketball player that I can, regardless of if we're a ten seed, if we're a one seed, whatever, whatever seed we are. Um, obviously, outside expectations different on us this year. Um, seating's different. All, all that stuff, uh, all that outside noise is different. But for us internally and for our program, I think we all, you know, view each other the same, and our goal is the same. We're going to come in, come in, and, and be the hardest working team. And um, I think if we come in with that mindset individually, that that helps us collectively. And and we're starting off really strong. I mean, practices have been the best that they've ever been in in my three years at, at Oregon. So I'm excited to see where we continue to grow. Um, yeah, I'm actually feeling more confident than before because now I really know what I'm playing for. Uh, I've mentioned that er earlier on to Sabrina. Like in my freshman year, I was still trying to figure out what exactly I was playing for. Like especially from co coming overseas, I did not really know what an NCAA tournament is like. So um, just experiencing that the first time was really tough and losing in the Elite Eight was really tough, but now I really feel confident, okay, I know what this is about. We've been practicing really hard, and it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, just really motivated. Uh, Coach, quick quick question for you and for Satu. You, you, you mentioned Minyan Moore. If you can help us understand how quickly she's picking things up, et cetera, and, and when you lose Maite, you lose an awful lot. You would stress our best player is Maite with all due respect to the, the women up there with you. So how more is helping you? And Satu, when your sister goes down uh, again, <coughs> um, so injury's already a, a factor. And are, are you playing for your sister now more than anything else? And I, I, is, it, is it rude of, of, of me to, to, to ask if perhaps that brings you back next year so you can at least get, will that at least be something you think about after this season so you might get to play one year with her at least? Um, I mean, I'm not trying to think of next year. Obviously, I really want to play with my sister. Um, I know she's going to be back, and I'm really proud of her of how she's handled this situation because it is really tough. Um, I don't know a lot of people that have handled this situation that mature as she has. Um, yeah, but obviously, like, I'm sad about it, and, and I'm definitely playing for her this season. Yeah, there's no doubt we're going to miss Maite. She, um, you know, was a, was a rock for us, four-year starter at the uh, hardest hardest position. What she did is she took a lot of pressure off Sabrina as a primary ball handler, so that Sabrina could play more off the ball and and make more happen in the in the half court. Uh, so, you know, we're we're going to miss her. There's no question about it. But I think Mignon's going to be. Uh, uh, you know, stellar there. You know, she gives us a whole different kind of attitude, especially on the defensive end. And, you know, she knows what we're about. She's competed against us for three years, and she knows what, what our program is like. Uh, what she has to do is, you know, she's got to, you know, the one thing I think you can say about the Ducks is we play under control. And, you know, she's got to continue to do that. And she will because she's a very bright young woman and a very bright player. Uh, I think, uh, you know, and her and Sabrina played club ball together, so they have a, a lifelong relationship, and uh, and I think that really helps. I, I think Mignon really looks up to Sabrina, and, and I think that's mutual, and so you can see that there's already synergy on the court. Uh, but I'll tell you what, she talks, you know. We, we spend, I don't know, as coaches forever trying to get our teams to, to talk, talk, talk on the court. Well, that comes natural to Mignon. She is a talker, and I think it is becoming, you know, infectious with the rest of the team. Uh, she is a great teammate. When Niara got hurt, the first person that reached out in the group text was Mignon, and she wasn't even in in um, Eugene yet. So uh, you know that's that's just kind of who she is, and I think uh, this gives her a chance to really showcase her game. You know, we're going to be a very visible team, and I think this is is good for her, and I think she's got a, a bright pro future as well. Kevin Dana, Stanford Women's Basketball Radio, uh, Sabrina. <coughs> You mentioned you had just a few hours to make this decision. If you're coming back, going pro, what were those hours like for you? I mean, that's such a big life decision. Did you feel rushed? Were you nervous? What was that? What were those moments like? Um, I mean, honestly, I procrastinate a lot, so I waited to like the last like 30 minutes to really decide. You remember she showed up on campus <laughs> in June. 
right. Yeah, <laughs> similar to my college decision. Um, and so I was pretty calm. I mean, obviously, when it was crunch time and I had to make a decision, you know, I started to get a little nervous and anxious and kind of was doubting what which decision was right for me. I was getting a lot of phone calls and texts from, you know, people back home, family, asking what I had decided and, and people kind of wanting to, to have their input on my decision. But um, I went on a walk. I was in Tampa, and I, w- I kind of went on a walk, and uh, my twin brother uh, had met me, and I, w- I just knew. I was th- I was like, there's no way that I-, I can call him or my team and tell him that I'm going to be leaving. It just didn't feel right. And so at that moment, I, I just knew that uh, it's meant for me to-, to stay for my last year. And so called him, and he put me on speaker with his entire family and could hear them all yelling and then obviously told my team, and, and they were super excited. And it was just like a, a kind of sign of relief after that, and I was just ready to get back to work. Uh, Kelly, I was just wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on what you're saying about the strength at the top of the conference and what you, what you see playing out. And also maybe that middle tier, how much, you know, uh, what kind of gap there might be. Is that changing at all as far as, the, you know, some of the other teams? Well, I, yeah, I think, uh, you know, 1 through 12, I, 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 you know, I truly believe that. I think Arizona was in the 8-9 game last year in our Pac-12 tournament, and they win the, the <coughs> postseason WNIT. I mean, that's in, incredible. And I think this this season that's going to be that same kind of depth. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it matters who you're playing, where. Uh, you better bring it or you're going to be in trouble. Uh, then the teams at the top, I mean, I, I think we have four teams projected in the top ten. I uh, don't know if that's ever happened. Uh, and usually doesn't happen with any conference. So I think that's really, really unique. And we truly have, I think, four, you know, not only Final Four contenders, but I think contenders for national championships. I, I truly believe we'll be in that discussion, and uh, and it's deserved. So I think we'll, uh, you know, it's going to be, I, I don't see anybody going 18-0 and 0 in conference. I think we're going to beat each other up like we always seem to do. And I think that battle tests us for uh, for the NCAA tournament. I do know this, that, you know, when we get to the NCA, and we've this, you know, Sabrina's won 10 games in the NCA tournament her three years at Oregon. I know we're ready. We, we've seen it all in conference play. We played against the best. And, uh, and, you know, so what we see in the NCA sometimes is actually easier than what we're playing against in conference. Uh, great coaches. I mean, I look at, you know, Tara, my goodness, she's a Hall of Fame coach, <laughs> and she has nine McDonald's All Americans, you know, nine. Uh, that is a loaded basketball team. Uh, I think they are the team, you know, I think we're getting some of that, that attention, but that's a team, Stanford, that uh, you better watch out for. And I know we're, um, you know, they're, they're going to be tough. Uh, two great games for us, both on national TV, which is, uh, I think, a great showcase. Two great programs and, uh, and a great conference. So the middle tier, I don't know. You tell me who the middle tier is going to be. I, I have no idea. You know, I have no idea. I think anybody could step up there. We have a lot of new faces in the conference, some great coaches. And, um, you know, so we'll we'll let it all play out. Uh, Coach, I just wanted to follow up on your reaction when Sabrina told you she was coming back and and how what was going through your mind during that whole thing. It completely changes your team, whether she's there or whether she's not, and just, you know, sharing it with your family on the speakerphone. Just tell me about that moment for you and leading up to it. Well, when she talked about it, it was my family. I mean, it's our family. My three sons are like Sabrina's brothers. I mean, we, I, we, we and I know they consider Sabrina family. But, uh, you know, I'd had a, honestly, I'd thought the whole time I, I felt positive about, you know, the fact she was going to come back. Um, I think she put a little pressure on herself and us when she used the term unfinished business. I love that. I, I think that's great. And that's what Sabrina is. She's, she's out there. I mean, she's a humble player, but she's very confident. And, uh, and, and I think that was great. But we were at home. You know, I had gone home Saturday after we lost on Friday. And a lot of the players, most of the team actually stayed in Tampa with their families. And so I did not have contact with Sabrina for, um, you know, for more than a day. And so you just never know who's in her ear and helping her make this decision and what happens because I wasn't there. Uh, but she really made our day when, when she had called us beforehand, even though right before she had called, it kind of broke on Twitter that she was going pro. Somebody had a, you know, made a, a false statement. They made an error, and uh, we had seen that first, and then, you know, yeah. Sabrina uh, called us. And that was scary. I know, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I think it was great, and, and personally – I think it was a great decision for her. And obviously, I told her that I would support and love her, and she can attest to this, 
whatever she decides to do. I mean, she is always family to us. Um, but, you know, Sabrina, like she said, the unfinished business. But, you guys, Sabrina has a chance to do some things that have never been done in college basketball ever by men's basketball players and women's basketball players. She's on pace to become a 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, 1,000 assist player. It's never been done, ever. And, uh, you know, I know she is. that's not what she's about, but she has a chance to really – you know, be the face of college basketball. And I don't think just women's basketball. When you say the name Sabrina, casual men's basketball fans know who you're talking about, unless there's another Zion coming down the, the pike here, and I don't think there is. I think Sabrina becomes really the face of, of the college game, and I'm really proud of her because there is nobody that can handle that better than she can. You know, she handles everything with, with grace and poise. And, um, you know, when I travel around with her, you guys, it's like, and with a rock star, and, and with Satu too, and with Ruthie and the whole team. I mean, we're at the Wooden Awards post-game party, or the post uh, the post-show party, and there's Kareem and Carl Malone and Dr. J and Jerry West, and I go up and introduce myself. I'm Kelly Graves, and they kind of look at me, yeah, whatever. And then I say, I'm Sabrina's coach. Coach, great to meet you. You know, oh, I love Sabrina. I've seen your team play many times. You know, so I'm now going around saying I'm Sabrina's coach, and that's how I get street cred. <laughs> so, you know, but I'm really proud of her and how she's, she's handled everything. And, uh, you know, there's not a day that goes by that she probably doesn't get half a dozen requests for an autograph during the day or a picture or whatever. And I just never seen her act anything but love to do it. That's actually all the time we have. So thanks so much, Coach. Okay. Sabrina, Bye. that's you. Thank you.